I put it low, I put it low, though. Yeah, it's good. You get low? No, you gotta get low, though. You gotta turn up more. Let them hear you. You know, let them hear where you're coming from. Watch it, watch it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll go all over preaching, okay. huh? Yeah. Where are you from? I'm from Canada. Yeah. I'm from the uh, U.S. Okay. What about Canada? I've been to Canada. Already. New Brunswick. Hello. My name is Master Bob Phillips. I'm from Marydale, Maryland. And uh, we're here to just preach to you the gospel today. The Lord Jesus told us to go into the world and teach all nations. And a lot of times in the States, I preach in my church, and only the same people hear over and over and over. So we've come to Belize, and we've come out here, and we've got permission to park here, and we're going to preach to people that may not have heard the gospel before. Or maybe you don't go to the church because you you had a bad experience in the church or or something happened that that you just really are not comfortable in church. Well today we're gonna to give you the opportunity to not have to go to the church, but we're gonna bring the gospel to the street and give you an opportunity to listen today. And you can do about your business, what you're doing, if you want to listen, if you think. But I'm going to talk today about Jesus. I'm going to read from the book of John. And I'm going to read to you today the words that Jesus himself is saying. So keep that in mind. It's not what I am telling you today, but I'm reading straight from the scripture to tell you what Jesus is saying today. And as we look at the 8th chapter, we'll begin to read in verse 29. Now, now, when I read to you what Jesus is saying, I'll have to see if I'm doing what he said. And you should look and see if you are living the same way that Jesus Christ lived when he was in this world. And here's what he says. Verse 29. And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath left, left me alone. For I do always those things that please Him. Uh, let me ask you this question today. Are you like Jesus? Do you always, He didn't say sometimes, but do we always do the things that please the Father? Do we always do the things that please God? Or do we sometimes do the things that please Satan? Or do we sometimes do the things that, that please ourselves? Jesus said, I always do those things which pleases God. And as he spake these words, many believed on him. And then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then you are my disciples. Now the problem with believing is this. Many people teach that you can believe on Jesus with your head and you have an intellectual consent that He is the Savior. But that is not saving belief. That is not saving faith because Satan himself believes that Jesus is the Son of God. He knows Him intimately. He came to Him and tempted Him and tried to, to get Him to, to relinquish His authority to Him. It takes more than intellectual assent to be a Christian. It takes saving faith. It takes saving belief. And as we look this morning at these verses, he says that many believe. And then he says, if you really believe, if you have the right kind of faith, if God works in your life, which He will, and He will work faith in you so that you can believe because we are we are all dead in sin before we're Christians. We have no spiritual life. We couldn't believe if we wanted to believe because we're spiritually dead. So what do we do? If God comes to you and He begins to work with you, 
and he enters into you and begins to convict you of your sin. If he regenerates you, opens your eyes so you can see that you're a sinner. And then he begins to work in you to believe and to have faith. And he begins to work in you to see that you see that you are a sinner. That you see that you are in trouble. The Bible teaches that if we live in sin all of our life, if we serve Satan all of our life, that we will not be with Jesus when we die. That we will not go to heaven. And Jesus also says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And no man, or really no woman either, can come to the Father, except come to me, except the Father draw him. And so, if God begins to work in your heart today, when you listen, when you hear these words. Verse 32, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You know, people yearn for freedom. All around the world, a revolution, so that people can overthrow governments and become free. And there's there's economic freedom, people want to be free. But no one's really free. No one is free unless they belong to Jesus, because you either are controlled by Satan, or by yourself, or by sin. There's no real freedom in that sense. If Satan is your boss, if Satan is the one that controls your thoughts, then you're not in reality really free. If you are the one that controls every thought you have and never consult God, then you're not free. You're a slave to yourself and you're a slave to your sinful nature. The only freedom that there is is through Christ when He sets us free. Then He goes on. He says in verse 34, he says, Whosoever committed sin is a servant of sin. If you sin all day long and it controls your every thought, you are a servant to sin. And if you are a servant, that means you're not free. It's really just logic as well as scripture. Then he goes on. He says, if the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. If Jesus comes to you and He saves you and you want Him and you ask Him for mercy and you cry out to Him and you believe upon Him and, and you give your life, your heart, your soul, if you give your whole being to Him and if you trust Him with all of eternity and you will be with Him more than anyone else, then you will be set free. He says, you shall be free indeed. Then he goes on. He speaks through this chapter. I'm not going to read it all. Then he says, in 42, Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. And he was talking to the Jews, and they were arguing with him. And they said, We believe Abraham, and we believe God, but Jesus, we don't believe. Can you imagine that? These people who were religious leaders were standing in front of God Himself, the second person of the Trinity, Jesus Christ, and they were looking physically into the eyes of Jesus. They were looking physically into the eyes of God. And they told Him, we don't believe on you. You're not really God. We're not going to listen to you. Then that's absolutely astounding that God Himself, the second person, is standing there and you look at God and you deny Him to His face. But if you deny Jesus today, it's the same thing. If you've never ever given your life to Jesus, if you've never ever repented of your sins and turned from your sins, and if you're still serving Satan ourselves and not Jesus, then it's the same as looking in His face and denying Him today and saying to Him, I don't believe in You. And you know how we might believe in Him today? One way is by standing to you today and preaching to you out of this book, God's book, and you hear the words of this book, and I'm reading to you secondhand 
the, sec the same words that Jesus spake, and you still deny him, that is just as bad as the Pharisees who stood and looked at him prison. You have an opportunity. We have a friend called Saitan Boogie Cake. Came from, from Canada. And I, I listened to him preach at the University of Pennsylvania two or three months ago. And I remember he said to a, to a man that was passing him and harassing him, he said, my brother, you will be held accountable now more than ever because today you have heard the gospel with your own ears and you've listened to the gospel preached. And if you still resist the gospel, there's no hope. You are going to be judged severely because now you can't say to God, I never heard. Nobody ever told me. Nobody, nobody ever preached to me before. And the same thing is true today. Once you hear the gospel, there is no more excuse. You either run toward the gospel or you run away from it. You either run toward the Lord Jesus or you run away from Him. So today as you listen to the gospel, I would beg you to listen carefully to what we're saying. We could be doing something else right now, but we came here because we love you, we love your soul, and we want you to be right with God. And then he goes on and says in verse 33, 43, Why do you not understand my speech? even because you cannot hear my word. And he says that the people, the disciples, the, the, the devil, the, the, the Pharisees, those Jewish leaders, you're the father, you're, you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and a bone not of the truth, because there is no truth in him, in Satan. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For Satan is a liar, and he is the father of lies. And beloved, listen to me. Satan will come to you and he will make sin look very appealing. He'll make sin look really good. And he'll say, go ahead, commit that sin. It's okay. But you know what happens when you commit sin? You know what happens when you continue in sin? You will gradually get worse and worse and worse because in essence you're selling your soul to Satan and the more he takes from you and the more sin you commit against God the further down into the pit and the hole you will go haven't you seen people on drugs who used to have a straight mind they could think clearly they were protected in the community they had a family and because they committed the sin of rebellion against God, they begin to trust the drugs instead of God Himself. Satan took them down and down and down. I've seen people who lost their families. I've seen people on drugs who lost their families. And they've also lost their jobs, their livelihood. They lost their self-respect. And finally, they reduced down, reduced down to a, to a pitiful state where they had no car, they had no family, they had no friends. They didn't know where to go the next day or the next step. That's what Satan does with you. If Satan is your Lord, and if you're the servant of Satan and the servant of sin, and you reject Christ, there is only one way to go, and that is to spiral down and down and down. And they cry out and they say, well, if I die, I'll be okay. Let me take my life and get out of this terrible predicament that I'm in. But you know what happens then? It's a million times worse. Because once you die without Jesus, and once you enter into eternity with your soul filled with sin, then Satan has you. Death has you. And you, the Bible says, and, and everyone is not saved, will go into hell and burn there and be punished for the sins throughout all eternity. That's where Satan wants to cause everyone to end up. Jesus says in 45, because I'll tell you the truth, believe not. Which of you convinced me of sin? If I say this truth, why do you then 
Do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you're not of God. He says that we should hear the words of God. And if, if God enters into you, and He begins to convict you, and you repent of your sins, and you turn from the devil, and you turn from the, your own sinful life, your own self, then Jesus says, you are me and one of mine, and you will follow me. The proof that a person is a Christian is that they follow Jesus. We talked about the other day, the sheep which follow Jesus. If you are not a Christian and you don't love Jesus, you will follow the devil. If you do love Jesus, and if you have asked him into your life and you you beg him for forgiveness and you repent of your sins, and if he is in your life, then you will want and have a desire to follow Jesus and belong to him. So in closing, a couple of more verses. It says verse 51. Very verily I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. You know, if you keep the sayings of Jesus, if you trust Him, if you repent, if you turn from your sins, if you turn from Satan, and you follow Jesus, there will be no death. You know there are two kinds of death? There's a physical death, and there's a spiritual death. And when you die physically, that's bad enough. But if you're dead in sin, spiritually, then you go to a place where the presence of God is not. And there you will have to spend eternity. Jesus action in 54. If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, and of whom you say that he is your God. If you have not known him, but I know him, and if I should say I know him not, I should be a liar like to you, but I know him. And I keep the same. You know what they did? The Jews turned from him. And it says in verse 59, they took up stones to cast at Jesus. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going to the midst of them, and passed by. Many of you today, as I close, will not pick up stones and throw at us today. But you still may just ignore the sermon today. You may ignore the warning. You may ignore the pleading to come to Jesus. You're going to have to be the one to decide what you will do. Will you trust Jesus? Will you give him your sin? Will you ask him for forgiveness? Will you repent? Will you stop walking the way you are and turn and repent and walk in the way that Christ would have you to go? We give you that opportunity today, and we plead with you to get yourself right with Jesus and to get right with God. We will pray that you might be able to do that today. And if you don't do it today, then when you get home tonight, get on your knees and talk to God. Get on your knees tomorrow and talk to God and beg Him for mercy and understanding and wisdom and salvation. If you want to talk to any of us, after we're finished, you come and, and we'll talk with you, we'll pray with you. And thank you so much for allowing us to be here today.